aren't y'all in charge? Who is in charge? You can't even ask for the manager because nobody is managing this. Welcome back to Allegedly Stephanie, where every month, once a month, I discuss my six-figure student loan payoff journey and how the heck you know I'm getting myself out of this systemic issue. Hmm, can one really get yourself out of a systemic issue? The answer is actually no. However, I'm trying. You know, I'm trying and I'm trying to advocate for all of us to have better laws in place for people who, you know, cannot afford to pay for education out of pocket. All right. And on that note, since we rambled a little bit in the beginning, this is going to be a combined September and October student loan payoff journey update, student loan update, because September was late. And technically, October is on time because today is October 3rd. So I figured why not just combine them? If this is your first student loan payoff video that you're watching, everything is always retroactive. So this is going to be what I paid in August and September. And I have exciting news. We are finally going back to the star chart. Yes, and not the astrology star chart. That's not what I mean. But if you've been here long enough, you know what I mean. You haven't seen this chart in probably two years because I haven't paid off a loan in two years because these loans are so large. However, I have paid one off and I only have two left. So before I get ahead of myself, this is going to be our agenda. It's going to be what I paid in August and September, paying off my third to last student loan, and then save plan updates and recertification because I just went through that process and it was interesting. It depends on what day you tried to do this because last week it did not work. This morning on October 3rd, it did work. And then a quick reminder about making sure that you are registered to vote. And also another reminder that if you do not want to stay in the line in certain states, they are still open to requesting your mail-in ballot. So we'll go over that for a quick second. All right. So what I paid in August and September. My starting student loan balance when I started to finally pay off my student loans on February 14th, 2020 was $304,680.17 trifling cents. Yes, by that time I was a second year lawyer who was finally making, you know, a livable wage. My first job, believe it or not, as a fully barred attorney that passed the bar on the first try only paid me $32,000. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everything is not always cracked up to be. So the amount I paid in August was $3,500 and the amount I paid in September was $2,500, which leaves my remainder balance at $132,518.97 trifling cents. Leaving my estimated total paid so far in four and a half years to $181,549.63 hard earned pennies. And that is estimated because it does not include the payments between 2016 when I graduated law school and 2020, which, you know, most months, some months, mm, I did give them a little money, the minimum every time the times that I did give them the money but that is not included in that because I hadn't started tracking it so you know realistically we're probably at like 190k paid what used to be a reasonable house two stories in some states yeah it's fine I'm on one of those I feel happy about it today <laughs> if I had done this video yesterday which I was supposed to yeah no no amount of makeup was gonna hide the fact that I was mad about it. Yeah, but today, today, there's only two student loans left. So before we get into the specifics of my student loans, a friendly reminder that you should head over to vote.org and make sure you are registered to vote because unfortunately, certain nefarious people are purging various voter rolls. So go head over there, make sure you're registered to vote and also, depending on what state you are in, you may still be eligible to request a mail-in ballot. So here in the state of New York, you are allowed to request a mail-in ballot until the end of the month, which will save you time in the line. Unfortunately, we do not have a national voter holiday, even though voting is on a Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So most people do have to go to work. If you do the mail-in, you don't have to worry about that. So highly recommend. Also, if you are an NYC resident, I'm sure you've seen the news that our raggedy mayor, in my opinion, has recently been indicted. And if you haven't seen the news, go ahead and watch the live stream I did on that. 
last week, I believe last week, detailing his various allegations and charges of fraud, accepting foreign donations, etc. And in the spirit of remembering to vote, next year in 2025, we are allowed to get a new mayor. Yes, which would require us voting, which would require us going outside. And usually in local elections, that's where you see the lowest voter turnout. So I hope you'll be like me and you'll be outside in your parka knocking on all the doors. All right, so back to the student loans. Here is my lovely letter. Stephanie, congratulations. The student loans listed below are paid in full. I would like to know, it took an advantage 21 days to send me a letter saying that that specific student loan was paid in full, even though I had paid 21 days prior and they had already taken the money out of the account 21 days ago. I don't understand why it takes so long to email and electronic communication. I think they do it on purpose <laughs> to just irritate you because really what is the reason? I should have got my letter the same day. I save all of my receipts. If you have been following the student loan journey for the entirety of this time, I started with 21 or 22. Let me look at the graph because it's right here. 21, I started with 21 student loans. Most of those were tiny loans, 1,200, 1,000, 2,000, et cetera, loans from college, from undergrad, where I did get a 75% scholarship. I also worked three jobs, you know, at one point. And I don't know, I don't really know. But I graduated undergrad with only around like 20,000 owed. So that was very fast when I started the payoff journey to pay that off. The six figure debt really came from law school. And not only just because law school at the time and still is now charging an exorbitant price for um, tuition, which is one of the reasons why people end up with all these loans. The tuition is too high. They are overcharging for tuition. And the second reason is the interest. And I wanted to take some time to break down my interest. So for this student loan, I started my legal career. My first year of law school at Loyola in New Orleans, the tuition as well as some of cost of living is included here in this first student loan. This loan originally, the original principal balance was $43,802. Now, drum roll please, let's take a guess on how much money I paid. Okay, you probably guessed wrong. I paid a total of $58,298.57 trifling cents, which brings the total interest paid on the one loan to $14,496.57 mother effing pennies. And that's why I was mad yesterday. <laughs> because when I wrote it out, I was mad. And then I couldn't do my video. So I had to wait till today when I felt a little bit of, um, I don't know, I don't think calm is the word. I haven't reached calm today. I felt a little bit of like, you know what? I'm almost there. I'm soon gonna be done. I will soon be free from this. Now, one of the interesting things I found from Aid Advantage, my original student loan service provider was FedLoan. FedLoan then sold me off last year to Aid Advantage, or the year before, it might've been the year before, to Aid Advantage. Aid Advantage sends out every month a monthly loan information. However, because I am in the save plan, the save plan, which is currently being challenged through our various court systems, and everybody on the save plan is now in forbearance, including me. So I haven't received this monthly loan information update since July 23rd, 2024. However, it is illuminating. Let us look at it for a second. So specifically, this is before I paid the loan off. I paid the loan off in September with September's money. So that first loan that you're seeing here, 1-01, that is the loan I just paid off. So the unpaid principal, it has now since been paid. But if you look here, it says the original principal, so that's the $43,802 even that I owed. The capitalized interest, that really piqued my interest. The capitalized interest is what accrues on unsubsidized loans while you are in school. Then they usually give you a three to four months, depending on your student loan service provider and the type of loan, you get a grace period. And then after that, the capitalized interest is tacked on to your principal balance. It becomes your new principal balance. And then you go about paying that as well as the interest that is then going to accrue daily as well. The capitalized interest for this one loan that I borrowed the first year of law school was $8,719.87 trifling cents. Hmm. 
Mm-hmm. That's $8,719.87 trifling cents of interest that accrued while I was getting the darn education. Interestingly enough, if you follow it across, student loan, what they have, because they renumbered them, they're different from my original numbers that I originally had. So student loan 1-02 and student loan 1-03 are the two largest student loans I have. And what's remaining, you can see here, one, the capitalized interest for another one of them is $8,074.85 trifling cents. And then the third one is $4,254.21 trifling cents for the last remaining loan. That one that has the least amount of capitalized interest because that's from my last year of law school. The difference it made from what was borrowed from the first year to the last year is a 2X difference. One is four grand, it's like 4,200. The other one is $8,700 because it's the time. The interest accrues daily and they rack it up daily and they add it onto your principal and then you have additional interest which is shown. Yeah, that raised my blood pressure a lot. I'm not gonna lie. One of the biggest things that I hope this series does is A, give you some hopefulness that, you know, with a lot of stress, <laughs> it's just the truth. With a lot of stress um, and planning, you can pay off your student loans and get out of it. However, when I have finished paying off my student loans, which will happen sooner rather than later, I personally am not going to feel happy until we have changed our student loan borrowing system. Because first of all, I'm a proponent that school should be free. Why do you want a dunce population? Why? Unless you want to control said population. That is literally the only reason for proponents against free education. Number two, school should not, say you want to charge. All right, you want to, you know, do the capitalist thing. School shouldn't cost the amount of money it does. There is no need. There is no need for a provost, a president, a treasurer, and all these other administrative roles that do not teach. There is no need. We need the lovely people in financial aid because they need to, we need some help uh, and we need some admin. The admin that are making between 500 and $1.2 million, they can get fired. <coughs> Let them go. They're doing nothing but smiling and waving and most of them have crooked smiles. L Let it go. I'm done with it. I would also like to note, and will never be tired of noting, other countries set limits on what the interest rate for student loans are. Australia has just changed theirs, but theirs previously were max at 2%. Um, various countries in the EU, they don't charge for school, and even when they do, there is no interest. There is no need. Charging students interest on an education is simply greedy. It's greedy. It doesn't go back into helping the school. It goes to these student loan service providers. That's it. And they don't even provide good service. Most of the UI on these websites are janky, raggedy, ugly. They hurt my eyes. They need adjustments. And, you know, let me get to my, I guess, my hopefulness. Yay, I have two student loans left. I've paid off 19. <laughs> All my life I've been paying these goddamn loans. Uh, the two left are my largest two. So the smaller, I've been doing the debt snowball method, which is you pay the smallest to the largest. That works well for me. At this point, it's been four years. Technically, mathematically, the debt avalanche method where you pay the highest interest rate to the smallest interest rate is mathematically better for you. However, if you do have federal loans, most likely your loans were in some type of forbearance. So your interest rate has been set to zero for the past four-ish years which has been lovely. And so then it didn't matter because you had no interest rate. So I'm gonna continue debt snowball method. So the smaller of the two left is $63,600.29 trifling cents with an actual interest rate of 6.84%. The interest rate is currently showing 0%, but the real interest rate is 684 I don't want to see her. I don't want her to see me. I don't ever want to play tag with her. I don't want her coming from me. The minute we get put back to regular interest, these loans are getting refinanced because we've already seen what 6.84 interest has reached the havoc. Yes, I don't want any more of that. Then the last one, my largest one, will be $68,918.68 trifling cents with a whopping interest rate of 7.21%. And again, back to that other graph, those weren't the original amounts I borrowed. I never took out a loan of 60 grand. 
those original loans were $53,873 and $53,915. I never borrowed 60K. I never borrowed 60 racks from anyone. I have been robbed. At this point, it's less I have been bamboozled and led astray. We have been robbed. We have been robbed. However, I'm trying. Now, with those two being left, my goal is to just pay them off as quickly as possible so I can be done with this. I would say something that is giving me hope since I do owe now, my remainder is $132,519.97 trifling cents, which is, whoo, we've come a long way from the $304,680.17 trifling cents. That number does reflect less than one year of my old full-time corporate salary. It does. So that does give me hope of, you know what? Push come to shove, corporate can see me. I have been testing the waters out of corporate consulting. We'll have to do a separate video on that because <laughs> that's why the September video was late. August was hectic. I, I tried. Let's put it there. I try. I'm still trying. I'm trying to figure out how to integrate the two and keep my sanity. Because what is the reason for lack of processes in these places? What is the reason for all of the bureaucracy? What is the reason for corporate in general? I don't know. And going back made me question my sanity. I'm not going to lie. So not to derail this, we'll go back to that later. You know, I do feel a little bit better that I know for certain this is getting paid off within the next year. Mathematically, it will. The question only is now, how fast will this get paid off? And preferably, I would like it to be paid off as quickly as possible so I don't ever have to think about it again. Which brings us to why you're here and our save plan updates or non-updates, because I don't think anyone knows what's going on. And by anyone, that includes the good-hearted journalists that are trying to do their research. That includes me, who also has made many calls to be like, what exactly is happening? Nobody knows. But let me tell you what I was able to find. So according to the Forbes article, that was the most recent article I could find. It's from yesterday, October 2nd, which discussed what's going on with the SAVE plan. The SAVE plan is currently being challenged in various courts. The Supreme Court sent it back down to the lower court. So we are waiting to see what happens with the two lawsuits that were filed to challenge different parts of the SAVE plan. If you are currently under the SAVE plan, your student loan service provider has put you in forbearance. I am under the save plan. I've been currently put in forbearance, which means you're getting 0% interest. Nothing is accruing, which is the best case scenario. You can still pay. I, as you can see, I've still been paying. Now is the time to pay because you have 0% interest and nothing is accruing. And simultaneously, what Forbes has pointed out, due to COVID-19, forbearance and subsequent extensions issued by the Biden administration, many borrowers have not had to recertify their income for the past several years, four years to be exact. But with the last extensions coming to an end, many borrowers will need to recertify their income for IDR, so income-driven plans, in the coming weeks and months. The Education Department has provided no official guidance for what these borrowers should do. It's me. I'm these borrowers. Nobody said anything. I got an email from the Department of Education saying, we are going to get back to you when we know what's going on. What? You... Aren't y'all in charge? Who is in charge? You can't even ask for the manager because nobody is managing this. It is a cluster. Yes. And I need to keep my YouTube um, AdSense money so I keep my mouth as PG as possible. So because the Department of Education didn't know, Advantage, who is my current student loan service writer, they popped up a notification that flashes red at me whenever I log in, which states your recertification is due for me personally. Mine is due October 16th. I said, OK, I haven't recertified these in four years because y'all haven't required me to recertify them in four years, which is great. How do we do this again? So I went and found some reading. OK, this is how you do it. They've changed the process. When I had Fed Loan, the last time I recertified my student loans, Fed Loan, you could do it inside the Fed Loan browser, inside their website. 
I don't know if aid advantage, aid advantage, I'm always calling them aid advantage, it's just aid advantage. I don't know if aid advantage is the only service provider doing this. You have to recertify through the studentaid.gov website, which I haven't been on that website in years. I have no need to go on that website. You go on that website when you are requesting the loans. So trying to find a login, that website also janky. Every time I re-log in, it tells me the password is wrong. So then I have to make a new password every time. I wish they would fix it. They're probably not. I don't know what they're doing with the money they're collecting from us. So according to mine, I have to recertify on the actual studentaid.gov website. I tried to do that last week. It didn't work. It said no. You will not be recertifying. You will not be doing that. You couldn't even click on it. According to Forbes, they fixed it this week. And according to me, it also works as of October 3rd because I recertified this morning. It was a fairly easy process. You can either link to your W-2 so you can they can automatically pull it up from the U.S. tax, the IRS. I was like, what do people damn name? You can either pull it up and directly link to the IRS website, or if you're like me and your income has changed since you filed your taxes, you can manually input. They allow you to input either pay stubs, your W-2 bank statements, or a letter from your employer stating how much money you make. So you can do that. It was fairly easy, about 10 minutes. The interesting thing is that according to Forbes, however, even though you do that process, though there's no way to know if forbearance is actually ending. The only way we're gonna know that is depending on what happens in the courts. So I decided to go through and do all of my paperwork because when I called Advantage and asked them, hey, what happens if I don't fill this out by October 16th? Because realistically, the court has not decided on the case. What is the need for me to fill this out? They said, listen, if it's not filled out in time, we may use a prior salary that we have on file and then your payment will be based on that prior salary. Prior me was a black girl in tech. Yes, who was making buku money as a, at that point, six year lawyer. Yeah, a humble content creator I am now. The money don't look like that. <laughs> The money sadly doesn't look like that. Will it look like that if I continue with consulting and actually do full time? Yeah, it will. But today, currently, while I'm still trying to figure out if I could manage full time and full time, it doesn't look like that today. So that encouraged me, to be honest, to just go and recertify it based on what I'm actually making in the past three months so it is reflective and doesn't give me the fright of my life for what it's worth. I would say from a monthly budget perspective, keeping your payment on paper, what you're required to pay as low as possible is usually best for your budget just in case things ebb and flow and then you can give the extra. That's how I've always done my student loans. So if they're telling me my monthly payment is $300, usually I've been giving them two, three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000, but I don't want them to tell me that all of a sudden I owe $3,000. What if I don't have it that month, you know? Give yourself some breathing room. So I would go ahead, according to them, and recertify. One of the good things about recertifying and that I was nervous about is since I'm currently in forbearance because I'm in the safe plan, I don't want to lose the forbearance because that's 0% interest and the 0% interest is super valuable. There is a screen, because it's a click through when you do it, which says, do you want to stay in forbearance while you recertify? And so you can select yes. So you'll keep your forbearance, but also, be I guess ahead of schedule from whenever they pull us out of you know forbearance and also be ahead of schedule if the entirety of the save plan is deemed unconstitutional which with these courts who knows who knows that's a level of stress I'll save for the next video which actually I will say for the next video, but one more thing from Forbes. Apparently, according to the article from Forbes, not only are Republican state officials leading challenges against the SAVE plan, they are also challenging numerous IDR plans. So according to the article, if the Eighth Circuit Court of Appeals adopts these arguments, it could jeopardize student loan forgiveness under several IDR plans, not just the SAVE plan, but ICR, PAYE, and Repay, which Repay is what SAVE used to be. I used to be on Repay as well. And that will cause a large amount of commotion because standard student loan repayment pricing is set to a 10-year payoff, which then makes most people's payments actually unattainable. Most people cannot pay the student loan and the interest within 10 years. 
It's not possible, which is why the income driven repayment plans are so important. So that way it keeps the amount feasible while you can also figure out like, okay, can I pay this off? If you have six figures worth of student loans, the only way to pay back six figures worth of student loans is to have six figures worth of income, which is why when I made $30,000 my first year as a lawyer, that's why they didn't get paid. I was like, well, the math was not mathing. But on that note, I always like to end these with how are y'all doing? How's your student loan payoff journey going? There's usually at least a handful of people that during um, in between the videos have paid off their student loans or their student loans have been forgiven. So congratulations in advance to y'all. I hope you're having a party. Hope you bought yourself a cake, bought yourself a donut, bought yourself a piece of asparagus if that's what you like, whatever you like and celebrate yourself. Because you know, I can imagine that the feeling of relief is very large. So I'm excited and hoping to join y'all within the next 12 calendar months, hopefully sooner. And as usual, I will be keeping up with the lawsuit and hopefully we will get to keep the safe plan. Hopefully it doesn't get thrown out. <sighs> Deep sigh. All right, I'll catch y'all next month. Bye. Well, I'll probably catch you in a couple weeks. I'll, I'll catch you this week if you're on the channel, but for this series, I'll catch y'all next month. All right, have a good day. It's so funny because I don't have my wine. So I'm like, what am I doing with myself? I'm just here, wineless.